Our sermon text this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of their elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is Corbin, that is, an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. The word of God for the people of God. Deep down, I love tradition. I love family traditions, especially around holidays. If you took a moment to think about a tradition in your family, many might pop into your head. Traditions bind us together as people, as families. We reminisce and look back on them fondly. Traditions have a special place for us. They connect us to people who came before us. And it's a way of honoring those people by carrying on tradition. Tradition is what our sermon text is about today. Here we have the Pharisees and the scribes. Scribes were the religious kind of legal authority. Observing and watching Jesus. Seeing what Jesus does. Seeing what the disciples do. And they notice the disciples eating without washing their hands. Now, it's probably not that the disciples didn't wash their hands before they were eating. That's really not what this is about. It's not about washing their hands. It's not about the Pharisees and scribes being worried about the disciples having dirty hands or getting sick from eating with dirty hands. It's probably that they didn't take the time to do the ritual properly to wash their hands, the tradition that was handed down to them. So there's a change here with how the disciples are moving and working in this world, where they're not being defined by the traditions that came before them. And that happens all the time with tradition. Things that were done in the past aren't done now in many different ways. It happens in our own families. As certain generations die, traditions might die with them that we don't carry on. It happens in societies and in civilizations throughout history. There's a lot of human traditions out there that we might look upon as rather odd because they're not from our culture. But there are traditions that are held all over this world deeply. Let's look at a couple as some examples of human traditions that have been passed along. We'll start in China with the tradition of foot binding for women. At some point in China's history, several hundred years ago, this might even be thousands of years ago, it was thought that The most beautiful way a woman could be was to have very tiny feet. 
And one way to do that would be to bind them up and almost fold them in half to make them very small. This is something that up until 100 years ago was present in China. Or what about dueling in Western Europe? For 500 years, if someone's honor was deemed as being hurt by another person, the only way to regain that honor would be to meet at dawn with swords or with pistols and to duel for regaining of honor. Or a couple of my favorites. In Spain, every year, they have the world's largest tomato fight where tons and tons and tons of tomatoes are poured into the streets and people come from all over the world wearing their goggles so they don't get it in their eyes. And they throw tomatoes at each other and just plaster the town with tomatoes. Or probably my favorite, on an island in Greece, every Easter, two rival parishes have a fireworks fight where parishioners gather they hit their fireworks with the idea of the first one to hit the bell tower of the other parish wins. And hundreds of thousands of fireworks are shot at the opposing church. With all the consequences you would expect, every once in a while something lights on fire that shouldn't be. And yet they do it every Easter. It's a rather odd way to celebrate it. The resurrection of Christ. These kinds of traditions go on and on and on. Some eventually die out, but humans love tradition. It gives us a sense of belonging and purpose. And for the Jewish people, for the disciples in Jesus' time, the traditions of their ancestors were held in such high esteem that for most they would never consider going against them. But for the disciples following Jesus had started to show them what was truly important. It wasn't the traditions handed down to them. It was ministering to people, getting dirty, getting defiled as they would be called in order to be with the people who needed it the most, to sit at tables and eat with them, to be in fellowship with them, to love them. Because they were unlovable, they were dirty, they were defiled. They were outside of society. Rarely are these conflicts about things like washing of hands. I don't have any doubt that the disciples rinsed their hands off if they were dirty before they ate. But they did not go through the ritual that was handed down. And for that, those in power said that they were defiled. Their hands were defiled. But Jesus would have none of it. In Mark... The gospel writer does not waste words. He gets to the point, and he stays on point, and he moves quickly, and Jesus quickly quotes Isaiah and calls the Pharisees hypocrites. That Isaiah, the great prophet, was talking about them because they place human traditions before the commandments of God, and they teach them as doctrine. You see, the dark side of tradition is a lot of times they can be used as power over people. The Pharisees and the scribes used these traditions to hold power over people. Because if they deemed you unclean or defiled, you were out of society. You couldn't go to the temple, you couldn't participate in Jewish life, and others would have to shun you out of fear of getting the same treatment. That wasn't a commandment handed down by God. These were human commandments, going against what God said and gave. 
for the Pharisees and the scribes to call the disciples' hands defiled shows they didn't see who Jesus was or what Jesus was doing, or the fact that their hands were the very hands of God on this earth. In all their dirt, in all their uncleanliness, they were the hands of God before them. That's what Jesus taught the disciples. We love our traditions. And maybe in the church and in the modern church, we're guilty of some of the same thoughts as the Pharisees in this story. Whenever we try to change things in the church or stop doing something that's always been done, there's always pushback. There's always the cry of, but that's our tradition. That's what we've always done. That's how we've always done it. A lot of times we're guilty of exactly what Isaiah talked about. Teaching human precepts as doctrine and abandoning the commandments of God for human tradition. And I believe one thing God has done during this pandemic that has been happening even before the pandemic that will continue to happen is to strip away the human traditions that we hold oh so dear that get into the way of being the church. Of reaching out to those who feel lost, hopeless, abandoned, disconnected, isolated. Those who feel unworthy. Those who are called less than. Those who are outside society. Deemed defiled and unclean. Friends, in my many conversations before I took this position with the PNC, we talked a lot about this very thing about the idea that I believe God is calling us to seriously look and examine at what we do, what we put our time into, what our energy goes into, what it is that we show the world in being the church. And a lot of that's going to come through letting go of human tradition. Letting go of the things that we have held on to, that we have carried in the church, that has defined us largely often to our own detriment. Letting go of those things and reimagining what it means to be church. And expanding our minds through the work of the Holy Spirit to envision what God is doing in the church now. This is an easy work. In fact, it's very difficult and often painful work because it says we have to let go of some things that maybe we've held on to dearly, letting go of tradition. But in doing so, make no mistake, we are following God into the future of the church. A future that looks much different than the past, where many of our traditions will not follow us. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's what happens every time God shows up. A messenger says, don't be afraid. Follow boldly, with courage, with imagination, with creativity. The future is open and wide. God is writing it even now and inviting us into the process to use the creativity we've been given to try new things, to expand our understanding of what it means to be church and to minister to people in God's name. Do not be afraid. Have courage and with joy follow God in this new endeavor. Amen.